What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and today is my round two snow runner review on the wannabe off-road truck, the GMC MH9500. So you guys know the drill. Let's do this. Roll the tape. If there ever were a most sold vehicle in the game of SnowRunner, I believe an educated guest would say it's the GMC MH9500. So on my last video I bashed a GMC. Today I'm going to give y'all a fresh perspective on rather new developments and upgrades to this vehicle. So who knows, after this video you might want to dust the truck off or potentially purchase it back. Before we dive into the traditional pros and cons of the truck, let's talk about some base stats the GMC MH9500. The GMC is classified as one of three highway trucks in the game. It comes in with a weight of 6.06 .06 tons. Stock configuration has a power to weight ratio of A+, durability of A-, fuel consumption B, fuel capacity 240 liters or 64 gallons. It's all-wheel drive capable then becomes all-wheel drive switchable with the upgrade much later in the game. Diff lock is capable becoming switchable with the upgrade on the second map, Smithfield Dam. The GMC comes stock with 43 inch highway tires. It upgrades the all-terrain tires at level six, upgrades the off-road tires at level eight, and finally upgrades the chain tires at level 12. And now we're moving on to the pros and cons. As you know, I prefer to hear the bad news first, so here's the bad news for the GMC MH9500. Downside number one, lightweight. Coming in at the lightest of the highway trucks, the GMC suffers somewhat with traction. Although it is slightly heavier than the Fleet Star, it is rather light. To kind of put this in perspective for you, some of the scouts like the Tatran 420, the Ford F750, and the Cat TH357 all weigh more than the MH9500. So I know what you're thinking, gosh this guy is such a stickler about weight. But please believe me that weight is either upside or downside in the game of SnowRunner. Number two, power and hauling. As you will see in this video, the GMC struggles with loads of more than two slots of cargo. It also has a really tough time staying out of first gear. For having a power to weight of A plus and all wheel drive, one would think that you would have enough power to haul heavy loads and be able to switch gears every now and then. The use of high gear after gaining forward momentum was really the only way I could keep it out of first gear. Upon experimenting with just gas and auto opposed to high gear, I feel as though high gear makes up most speed in moderate areas. In my opinion, gearbox manipulation is a must when driving this truck with heavy loads. The true power test with the GMC was conducted in Smithfield Dam driving up the large hill and it had a lot of trouble. Its wheels would lock up even with diff lock engaged. Coming in at number three, fuel efficiency and tank size. Under really heavy loads, the GMC will tend to make it to its destination with some trouble, but I did notice super high gas consumption. The engine seems to be doing the job well in most cases, but it's also working so hard that it feels as if it's just chewing through fuel. Personally, before phase two patch, I considered anything over 3.0 gallons per minute a gas guzzler, but in recent findings fuel economy has seemed to get much worse in SnowRunner. Now anything that's over 3.5 to 4 gallons a minute is really eating up fuel. In many cases you will see that the GMC is in the mid 4 range and sometimes touching the 5.0 gallons per minute range. Now also take into account that I do not have the fine tuned gearbox which eats even more fuel than the off-road gearbox. There's just no better way to put it. The truck flat out suffers from a small 240 liter, 64 gallon tank with bad fuel economy. In the final downside, number four, it's somewhat tippy. Although it feels more stable and rigid than the Fleet Star, the MH9500 still can get off balance at times, which has surprised me. Even though the truck is a little tippy, you'll see the quick winch save me at fast speed, sparing me the rescue mission with an even more tippy Fleet Star. It's not often that trucks roll on me with a semi-trailer attached, but this happened a few times which kind of caught me off guard as well. With that being said, I do feel however that it's not such a big deal. Sweet, now the bad news is out of the way, 
let's talk about some upsides. Here are the pros for the GMC MH9500. Upside number one, it has good ground clearance. The Ray suspension upgrade definitely boosts the vehicle's ability in deep mud. This upgrade causes less frame and bumper grounding on rough terrain, which takes precious weight off your wheels. Intentionally, I went through deeper spots to test this, and although progress was slow, it still went through well enough. The second upside for the GMC, it's the only all-wheel drive and diff lock highway truck. As mentioned before, there are only three highway trucks in the game, but the GMC is the only one with all-wheel drive and diff lock. Although you have to wait quite a while to get the all-wheel drive upgrade, it boosts its performance greatly. The vehicle seems to transform from a dinky truck that's thrown away right after you find the garage and the Fleet Star to an off-road caliber highway truck. Coming in at the number three upside, it's an off-road truck competitor. After the all-wheel drive upgrade and recent phase release of the Cola Peninsula, it now competes with off-road trucks like the Freightliner 114 SD and more. Now, the GMC is no trailblazer when it comes to rough terrain, but it does have grit for a highway truck. To my surprise, the GMC pulled a broke down Tega out of the swamp without repairing it first. It was really impressive because I've only ever done that same task with an Azov truck or the Cat 745C. Blazing in at number four, it's fast. So the GMC, according to Spin Tires fandom, is the fastest highway truck in the game, coming in at 54 miles per hour. Flying around paved roads with light terrain, this truck can just flat out make up time with raw speed. Upside number five, utility. Like the Fleet Star, the GMC has a unique ability to have a loading crane, flatboard slash sideboard bed, and a hitch trailer. But wait, there's a catch. The sideboard bed is so close to the truck bed that it can affect backing up and sharp turns because of contact. To remove this issue, just use the flatbed trailer that holds the same amount of cargo as a sideboard bed trailer. The flatbed trailer has a longer tongue hitch and it will prevent that contact from the truck bed and the trailer bed. Final upside number six of the GMC, it's free. We all know that vehicles in SnowRunner are super expensive, so landing a free truck is pretty exciting. The GMC is your first free truck, by which you can either use it, wait for the all-wheel drive upgrade, or just sell it to buy something else. Regardless, free stuff is just awesome. So in conclusion, the GMC has made a huge come up with the welcome addition of the all-wheel drive unit, but I feel it's way too late in the game. It would have been really nice if the developers placed this all-wheel drive unit in Alaska or Michigan to give the truck more popularity and more use. For being a highway truck, the MH9500 compares to some off-road trucks, but it still gets outperformed by the mid-tiers and the elites. So then the question arises, why are highway trucks in the game? Well, personally, I like to use them as tankers and strategically place them around the map as mobile gas stations. Some maps don't have fuel stations or they're just too far to reach. A good habit I try to get into when I'm scouting is not just to grab the upgrades and the towers, but to remember what terrain you're going on. So there actually are some places I would not trust the GMC to go, but I know those because when I go scout them, I just remember how harsh they were. You can implement the same principle when planning to use less capable highway trucks that don't have diff lock and don't have all wheel drive you can still use those trucks. You can use them for cranes, and what I do is I just use them for tankers. I hope this review gave you a fresh new perspective on the GMC MH9500. Please smash the like button, leave me a comment on what truck you want me to review next. Definitely share this video with someone who's struggling with the game for sure, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, stop by my Twitch channel for some nerding out. Hope you all have a wonderful day, God bless, and stay upright.